So whenever I'm thinking about adding a new move to my workout routine, I ask myself one simple question. What would Kratos do? It's a pretty simple question, and if you've played enough God of War games, fairly instinctive to answer. For instance, overhead press. Move. Yes. Handstand walk. No. Heavy deadlift. Yes. Sled push. Boy, you're really strong. Probably. Who are you afraid of? Fine. Oh, okay, definitely. Hammer swings. Yes, yes, and yes. So why do I do this? Well, two reasons. Firstly, I feel kind of an affinity with Kratos. We're both bald, bearded men trying to raise our sons under challenging circumstances, and our interests include fighting and being left alone. But secondly, Kratos is really functionally capable in a way that a lot of gym bros just aren't. He's strong, he's agile, he's fast, he can sprint, he can fight, and he's got axe swinging, chain whirling cardio for days. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through a Kratos-inspired workout routine that will hopefully get you feeling and looking a little bit more like the God of War. This is the big one. Stop saying that. So how do you get to be more like Kratos? Well, there are tons of ways, but I think a great starting point is to focus on what strength coach Dan John calls the five basic human movements. And those are pushing, pulling, hip hinging, squatting and loaded carry. So every workout you do should include at least two or three of those because if you're strong in those movements then quite honestly you can do almost anything that Kratos can. So first I'm going to explain them a little bit more. So pushing is pushing. It's bench press but it's also press ups, dips and overhead press. Now if you're already interested in looking more like Kratos you probably don't need me to tell you to do more pushing in your workouts. It's very popular, everyone does it. But one thing I will say is that you should definitely include both horizontal and vertical pushing, and you should probably include one arm pushing too. It'll make you more athletic, it'll address any asymmetries you have, and it'll make you more powerful in movements like punching and throwing. Now pulling is also obvious, but it's also crucial. Pulling will balance out all that pushing that you're doing, helping your posture, developing your upper back and giving you that V-shape that'll help you fill out t-shirts. You should be doing both horizontal and vertical pulls, which definitely means stuff like pull-ups, but again, you should probably also be considering one-armed pulling work, which might mean basic stuff like one-armed rows, but might also include stuff like arm over arm pulls, which are great for functional strength. Thirdly, the hip hinge is where stuff starts getting interesting. You might not have heard of this movement, but you've definitely seen it, because it's the basis for basically any powerful athletic movement. It's what you do to jump, it's what you do to do Olympic lifts, and it's what you use to do a double leg takedown. You should probably be doing a mixture of explosive and grinding hip hinging movements, so that's like a mixture of deadlifts and stuff like kettlebell swings or throws, and you should also be doing stuff like vertical and horizontal jumps. Now the squat is something that Kratos doesn't do very much, but it's arguably the best all-round movement for developing strength and mass. And so if you want to be more like the son of Zeus, you should definitely do them. It's really up to you what kind of squats you do. You can do front squats, back squats, zercher squats, overhead if you're nasty. You can pick, but you should be doing some kind of squat. And finally, loaded carries are probably the one thing most people who work out don't do, but they're the thing that Kratos does the most. They're a move you often see done by strong men, but really everyone can benefit from putting them in their workout. They're a great thing for everyone to do because as well as working multiple muscle groups at once, they build conditioning and they burn fat and they're not that technical to master or do. Now I'm including stuff like sled pushes and pulls when I say loaded carries, so that's something we're gonna consider later. Tired yet? No. Okay, so how do you put all this together? There are tons of ways, but my favorite and the one I do the most is to do three or four workouts a week, alternating between upper and lower body workouts each time. I do two or three supersets a day, followed by a finisher, and that lets me hit everything I need to hit in a typical week, even if I can only get to the gym a couple of times. So to take a push day as an example, I'll do a warm up, do a bunch of warm up sets, and then I'll get straight into a relatively heavy movement, like an overhead press, a bench press, or a dip. I'll superset that movement with a pulling movement, so that might be like a weighted pull up, a regular pull up, a bent row or a seated row. And for the next movement, I'll do a one-armed movement, but I'll switch the plane of motion that I'm pushing in. So if I was originally doing like a horizontal press, like a bench, then I'll switch to a one-armed overhead press. Or if I was doing a heavy overhead press to start, then I'll move to a one-armed bench press. Again, I'll superset that with a rowing movement, and again, I'll try and switch the plane I'm pushing in. So if my first movement was a pull-up, 
then I'll move to like a chest supported row or a bent row for a horizontal pull. Depending on how much time I've got, I might do a third superset and that's where I don't mind doing a little bit of accessory work. So I might do like tricep push down, superset with bicep curl. And then typically I'll finish that workout either with some abs or with like an actual timed finisher. So something that's designed to make me work really hard and get my conditioning up for like the last two, three, five minutes of my workout. Some finishers I like are like a Tabata battling ropes, so that would be 20 seconds of thrashing the ropes as hard as you can, and 10 seconds off, repeated eight times. I might even do something like five press-ups every 15 seconds for five minutes, just to get a load of extra volume in at the end of the workout. If it's lower body day in the gym, I'll typically put my explosive stuff first in the workout, so I'll do like a good, thorough warm-up, maybe some jump squats, and then I might do something like box jumps to get all my fast twitch fibers firing before I start my main workout. And then for my main movement, I'll either do a grinding movement like a squat or a deadlift, or I'll do a strongman style movement like a heavy sled push or a loaded carry. And I'll superset that movement with some like band pull aparts or some press ups, just to get a little bit of extra work in and to give me a breather between the heavy sets. If I'm doing squats, I'll usually do something like five sets of five, and I usually superset that with something that's nice and easy and sort of almost like recovery-like for the upper body, like some unweighted pull-ups or some press-ups, just to get a little bit of extra volume in, nothing too challenging. Then for my second movement on squat day, I'll do some single leg work, so that might be like weighted lunges, single leg step up, something like that. If it's strongman day, I'll switch to another strongman movement. But that could also be a unilateral movement. So there's a move called the suitcase carry where you carry a heavy weight in one hand and that's really good for your core strength. I like a movement called the waiter's carry which is like carrying overhead with one hand. Probably not something you'd say Kratos do, but definitely great for your core. And then for my third movement on lower body day, I'll probably do quite a hard finisher. I might do a timed 500 meter row, a timed 500 meter ski erg. I might even just do a bunch of unweighted squats or like a little mini Metcon. The general idea is that I start with the heavier stuff that's more technical and that I do fewer reps for first, and then I move on to the stuff that's easier, uses less weight and is less likely to injure me as I get more tired throughout the workout. And that's basically how I work out like Kratos. I work out about three times a week, so I just alternate these three throughout the week, which means some weeks I get two upper body days and some weeks I get two lower body days. If I had more spare time and I wasn't already doing other stuff like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I could switch this to four days a week and get two of each throughout the week. It's super simple, you can kind of always improvise to get on the kit, and if there's a day I can't go to the gym, I can easily smash out a bunch of press ups or pull ups, or if it's lower body day, find a hill near my house and sprint up it a whole bunch of times. That's how I stay in shape at 43 years old with a small child to look after, it's working out great for me. Ah. And that, I think, is what Kratos would do. Go train!